believe that this murder would occur. At 4.15 in the morning, Jones began to head to a hotel on McKinley. One of the suspect vehicles is seen following the victim. However, instead of following them into a parking lot, they stage across the street. At 4.38, three shooters exit a vehicle and walked in the direction of the hotel. They murdered Jones with a handgun and two rifles. This barrage of gunfire also struck three additional victims who miraculously survived this incident. Let's look at this video. This is at the hotel, and you can see the shooters are getting in position for their planned out murder. And they are shooting at Charles now, and you can see that he's the passenger in that car that's moving and trying to flee. And again, they're still shooting at him. He's the right front passenger in that vehicle. It's clear from that video what they were set out to do and what they had planned to do. The investigation would later reveal that the three armed shooters were Sean Gaithright, Richard Murphy, and Davion Murphy. Detectives used footage from the scene, license plate readers, and phone logs to identify two vehicles and link them back to the suspects. Furthermore, it was found that the shooters are members of or affiliated with rival gangs of Jones that go by ATK and 1200. Jones was part of the six block gang. Detectives believe that the ATK and the 1200 worked together to target Jones as part of an ongoing feud in Jacksonville. I wanna send a clear message to anyone that the city of Tampa is not where you want to come to settle a dispute. You will be charged, you will be arrested, and you will be prosecuted to the fullest extent possible. Furthermore, if you're a gang member, there's no alleged immunity through a cone of silence, as our detectives will find evidence needed to make an arrest and hold everyone accountable, just as we did in this case. Then, you will be prosecuted by our tenacious state attorney, Susie Lopez. Today would not be possible without the assistance of our law enforcement partners in Jacksonville, who collaborated with us and shared intelligence that helped us in this case. Their agency also assisted with many search warrants, locating and arresting these dangerous individuals. At this time, I would like to invite Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters, followed by State Attorney Susie Lopez. Thanks, Chief. So good afternoon, I'm T.K. Waters, Sheriff of Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you, Chief Burkhall, for inviting me to stand with you as we announce these murder arrests. Today, three dangerous criminals are off our Florida streets and in police custody where they belong. These individuals have chosen lives of urban terrorism, and with their arrests, we show Tampa, Jacksonville, and the rest of Florida, the rest of this state, that we hold violent criminals accountable. At the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, we will always work together with our law enforcement partners to ensure that our communities are free of those who choose violence over peace. I want to applaud the investigators from Tampa PD and JSO for their committed collaborative work to bring violent criminals to justice. What I saw in this partnership evidenced the very best of information and resource pooling to ensure public safety. In closing, I want to directly speak to those who choose violence and those who embrace a culture that glorifies violence. Florida, Tampa, JSO, Jacksonville, Miami, wherever you are, will not tolerate foolishness, will not tolerate shootings and unneedless violence. 
We will not make excuses for poor decisions. We will hold you accountable for your criminal actions. For us, a state of law and order, law enforcement agencies in this state will always work together to protect the good and decent people who chose to live within the law. And we will always work together to ferret out those who choose the lives of violent crime. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. The ongoing fight between these two groups spilled over into Tampa last month. Let me be clear, the feud stops here. All five of these defendants are facing life in the Florida State Prison, even the ones who didn't pull the trigger. In Florida, if you participate in the planning of a murder, you can be held accountable for the person's death. And that is what we intend to do here. There were three people who pulled the trigger. You saw it on the video. Five people, though, are charged with murder. The level of planning and coordination between these five defendants was truly alarming. It is clear that they all had one purpose in coming to Tampa, and that was to kill. And let's not lose sight of the fact that there are innocent victims in every homicide case, the loved ones who are left behind. His fans knew him as Julio Fulio, but to his mom, he's Charles. We're fighting to make sure that she gets justice. I was able to speak with her this morning before she got to Tampa, and she's in Tampa with us today. I wanted to let her know that my office takes gun violence very seriously, and I let her know that these five defendants will be held accountable for their calculated actions. The defendants are in custody, three of them, in Jacksonville, and will be moved here to appear in court. My office will file a motion for pretrial detention to ensure that these dangerous individuals are held behind bars as they await trial where they belong. I want to commend the Tampa Police Department for this investigation, as well as our collaboration with JSO. The TPD investigation developed a mountain of evidence and we will work hard to ensure that justice is served for all victims in this case. Thank you very much. I have some time for questions. Uh, it's extensive, and the state attorney spoke about it, how the mountain of evidence, this would not be possible if it wasn't for our hardworking detectives in getting evidence from videos, tag readers, and cell phones. This amount of work I have not seen before, and uh, it would not be possible if it wasn't through our detectives and through us working collaboratively together with the JSO and the ATF and the U.S. Marshals. So our investigation is still ongoing. And uh, Sheriff, if you have any other details that you want to speak on to that. So Young and Ace has long been known in Jacksonville. Um, we are consistently monitoring that group, those groups. Um, we have people that are always watching them. Uh, I won't speak to the chief's investigation. That's up to TPD. We don't have an investigation on him right now. But he can't move around in Jacksonville without us knowing about it. And that's, uh, that's for the betterment of our community. Uh, we're pretty confident they already know and to turn yourselves in so we can have this resolved peacefully. And of course, to anybody out there that knows where they're at to let us know so we can get them in custody and hold them, hold them accountable. right now look at look at what we're doing right now we're bringing to justice five people in a murder in a case that is very difficult to make an arrest it's us working collaboratively with the community with jacksonville and uh, if this doesn't make a statement i don't know what does
Absolutely. We have, we have officers everywhere. There's particular places in there that we actually are holding accountable for businesses that are allowing this type of activity that we're actually bringing up to a public nuisance abatement. So we are attacking this on all fronts. Well, if you look at that, this is something that you would originally think you would see in a movie, but this isn't a movie. This is real life, and these are people's lives. And that's something that we can't forget is no matter who they are, these are people's lives that are at stake, whether they're innocent or not, and we can't lose sight of that.